Good evening, folks, and uh, welcome to tonight's edition of Fools Rush In, a podcast discussing all things from Saturday and a number of other topics as we go through the evening. So don't adjust your screens. Fifey hasn't had a shave in looking different. Um, you've got Ocus Road, clean shaven tonight, which will uh, make our friend, flower girl, very happy tonight. So good evening to you. And the reason I'm doing the intro tonight is thanks to my friend, Miss Black Hippie. You can see her in the background behind me. You give me the hashtag, uh, let Nick speak. And I thought this is the best way for me to get some words in before everybody else chips in and uh, it's, uh, you know, preventing me from having a real good say on what's going on. So again, we're going to have a good good night tonight. We've got a couple of shout outs. Uh, first of all, to Claire, who if you haven't seen her work, is absolutely a brilliant photographer, takes loads of stuff on Swindon Town. So uh, have a look at her on Twitter and you'll see some really fantastic shots of the players and, and the club. And another shout out for... Uh, Josephine STFC, we've got a new viewer tonight joining in, joining in the pod. So welcome to you, and I hope you enjoy, um, I hope you enjoy tonight's show. So um, viewer numbers, uh, they've been increasing recently, um, which is which is brilliant. So don't forget to leave comments and questions, and then uh, you know we'll we'll push those out, and uh, hopefully you enjoy the show. And then, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, just one other thing um for any new viewers that we've got um when we introduce the guys on the panel i'll give you a summary summary of what to expect from each poster so uh, you can uh, be fully briefed on uh, the types of information that they'll feed out to you take my hands take my Evening, Warren. Evening, Nick. What a glowing, glowing intro that was. That was class. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, this, is, this is Warren, as you can see. He's one of our most thought of members on the pod. He set the bar really high. Had fantastic comments the other week when he was on. So you've got something to live up to, Warren. And we'll uh, really appreciate your views tonight. I'm sure they're going to be spot on again. Bless you, Nick. Thank you very much. It's great to see you on top of the board. Cheers. Evening, Rich. How are we doing, Nick? Class entrance, that, mate. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And uh, we've got our on-the-spot reporter, Rich, who goes to more games than most and gives first-hand report on Swindon Town FC. So, again, we're <laughs> we're really looking forward to his uh, views on Saturday. And uh, I'm sure he will give us an honest opinion of uh, how good, bad or indifferent the performance was. So, again, look, really looking forward to that. I'll do my best. Cheers. Craig, evening. Evening, Nick. Uh, good intro there, mate. Spot on. Well done. Cheers. And Craig, as probably all you regulars will know, is the most realistic member of the podcast. Um, he said exactly where the town would be, and he's spot on. Not like some of us who thought we'd be in the top seven or even the top three, me included. <laughs> So well done, Craig. Maybe we ought to listen to you a bit more. You're uh, spot on with your predictions. Nick, Nick I'd rather I'd, I'd rather be an optimist than a realist. Trust me, I think <laughs> I'd be a lot happier with life. But thank, thank you for the compliment, mate. No problem. It's ben. <laughs> Evening, Ben. Nick, how are you, buddy? That was a great yeah, intro. Really good. Good. Good to see you, and Ben. Actually, I think Ben's somewhat wasted on the pod. Um, he could be working for a political party, don't know which one, because he's such a good spin master that he can, he puts a positive spin, all things Swindon Town, and we love him for it. So welcome tonight, Ben. <laughs> that was brilliant, thank you. <laughs> Even at Westminster, they've got my number, the next spin doctor. You don't need it. Evening, Fifey. Hi, hey, Nick, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Th th thanks for the late text the other night that uh, 
had me up for another hour thinking about what I was going to say. So cheers for that. <laughs> Anytime. And, uh, Fife, Fife is the man. I mean, what can I say about him? It's all this is down to Fifey. Absolute genius. I mean, the amount of hard work he puts in to make this happen. It's uh, absolutely brilliant. And I know all the guys appreciate it. So cheers for your, your hard work, Fifey. Love doing it. And uh, the show is really what you've put together and, uh, you know, crack on with all the good, good work for it. It was, really, really, Fife, it was really nice of you to tell um, Nick what to say there. Yeah. Brilliant stuff, yeah. mate. <laughs> well, well done, Nick. You, uh, yeah. you, you've, you've read the script perfectly there. Um, so we've now hashtag let Nick speak. I can go back to hosting. Everyone's happy, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. we'll see what comments we get coming through. And, and I think it's only fair, guys. <clears throat> Nick's given us such a nice intro that between us, we should be able to come up with something back. So uh, I'll start. Um, Nick, he he keeps us young. Um, his youthful enthusiasm for just about everything. No, no, no. Don't, don't take it wrong, Aaron. His youthful enthusiasm. Like, we've got this reputation of, of being, you know, a bit of like the bad boy of the pods. We're the, we're the outsider. Nick's the one that keeps us cool and relevant, I reckon. <laughs> Do you not agree? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Well, there you go. <clears throat> um, before we get into tonight's topics, there's just a couple of things I uh, I wanted to touch on, if I may. Um, we don't need to extend this out into discussion as such, in, unless there's anything um, you want to add. First of all, uh, congrats to, to Bryn on, on Player of the Month. I think an award that he very much deserved for his performance. I tweeted out the other day, um, considering... You know, a lot of us were there at, at the home game at Salford and he was being booed just for being in the lineup after the performance of the first game of the season. It's remarkable, the turnaround, and, and I'm delighted for him. Um, also have to say that the news today that we've all read about Hallam Hope, um, obviously former player, absolutely unbelievable. And, and we all wish him the, the very best of recoveries. Um, I cannot believe... Uh, and. It, initially, it, it was that he was attacked and, and everyone automatically jumped on the fact that, uh, of what they suspect it might be. And then there's news that it may well have been an opposition player that did it as well, which you just you just don't... I, I can't understand it. I, I just can't begin to. Um, and, and the final thing I want to say, a message that's close to, to all of our hearts, really. Um, as, as regulars will know, most of us enjoy listening to, to Lower League Look and have participated a lot over the, the last couple of months and they are doing a lot of work to do with mental health and there was a situation at the weekend where a lot of people were reaching out to a certain individual because he was going through his own trauma and just on behalf of everyone at Falls Rush In, just a reminder, it is okay not to be okay. And we are all here. If ever anyone wants to talk, and if, if you don't feel you can talk to a friend or family and you just want someone maybe on the outside, but that you recognize any of us will be happy, S send it into Fool's Rush In even. And one of us will get back in touch, absolutely. Don't feel you have to be alone with whatever you're going through. Someone will always listen, please. Um, with that in mind, guys, should we get on with the matter in hand? Um, yeah. And that is that 44 draws equals 14.6 wins. Um, Rich, as is tradition, let's come straight to you. You were at the game. Needless to say, I think I, I tweeted the word shit has never been used in so many different ways than it was in our WhatsApp chat. What was it really like? Where do I start? I mean... <laughs> To be honest with you, we, we started the way that we uh, have started pretty much every game this season. I mean, the only game that I haven't been at um, was uh, was Rochdale um, this season. Um, and uh, But every game that I've been to and every game that I've seen, uh, the defence has always looked very shaky at the start. Um, we, don't, we don't know where to put the ball. We don't know where to play it. Um, Obviously, we we know where we want to be. We want to be attacking. So from that point of view, um, Gillingham had the early going and everything like that. Um, and then after the red card, it was all us. But 
it was all us in the worst kind of worst <laughs> possible way you could think of. I mean, we we had 80%, well, near enough 80% possession in that game. And we didn't do anything with it. Um, I mean, there's some questionable players in that squad. Um, I, I, I hate to pick them up, but Shade was definitely one of them. Um, now I don't know whether or not the right right winger is his position because every time he gets the ball, he looks nervous with it. He walks the ball out of play every single game I've seen him play this season. He's walked the ball out of play at least three times in the whole game. Um, so I don't know really where to start with that. Um, I think some of the decisions uh, during the game were definitely questionable by Lindsay. Um, why would you stick with one up front when you're against 10 men? I mean, a three-year-old could have made that decision. Um, it's it's just it's it's just there's nothing. You could have said that there was. Um, you could have said, "Oh, we play nice football." We did. We played nice football, but unfortunately, nice football against ten men does not win you football matches. You've got to. I mean, I would have been happy to take a one-nil shitty win. I know how hard it is to because uh, I've seen games where you're against 10 men or even when you're against 11 men and teams are just defending for 90 minutes just to get a draw. The thing is as well, when we uh, when that we got that red card, Lindsay knew what he was going to be up against. He was going to be up against a team that's going to defend for the rest of the rest of the game. Now, if that red card happened with like 15 minutes to go, then I can sort of understand it's a little bit shorter time to sort of think of a uh, think of a different strategy or um, to try if you're chasing the game. But he had 80 freaking minutes to think <laughs> of a plan B in that game to try and get that win. 80 minutes. Now, last season, obviously Lindsay was our assistant manager, so. Uh, and I th I reckon last season, I reckon we might have been able to overcome that scenario. But it sort of, you sort of question his backroom staff that he's brought in here. Because usually if the manager can't think of a plan B, surely his assistants will have something. Because the assistants, they've got more time. They're not actually managing the whole team. They're thinking of ideas to actually think of how we're going to win the game. Now... There's got to be some question about that. This that, that's just how you can't think of a different scenario when uh, when to when you're down to, when you're playing against ten men and you've got eighty minutes to do it and a half time in front of it as well. Uh, I I I think there's some questionable decisions. Now I'm not saying I'm Lindsay out because no one near it because I do think managers should have time, but I'm very seriously concerned. Uh, for the next few games, he's got to turn it around. He's got to sort something out because Saturday just was not good enough. Um, Nick, Rich has kind of already alluded to the fact it, it is a different game, isn't it, playing against 10 men. But when you have the man advantage, you have to utilise it, surely. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did comment during the game and put on there, it's, oh, it's difficult to play against 10 men. And uh, Fifey come back at me. He said, "No, it's not." And um, I was quoting what Lindsay was going to say after the game in his in his post match. But um, so, somebody posted on on Twitter some interesting facts actually. Um, on the the first seven games, of oh, don't Saturday. jump ahead, Nick. Don't okay, jump ahead. Uh, okay, all right. Well, I'll talk about, about Lindsay then. I think the problem is I don't think anybody would be so worried with the points we've got so far. We've only, as lots of people said, we've only lost one game. Not losing is a good thing. Don't, don't no, stop. no, hang on, hang on. Positive. The problem is, it's the manner in which those games are happening. When Lindsay was appointed, he said we will be pay, playing fast forward, attacking football with lots of pace. Now, if they'd have been doing that in every game and t we hadn't been able to break the teams down, but we were given a bloody good go. I don't think there would be so much negativity around him. So he's made a rod for his own back. He's not 
playing and using the players as they should be used with the type of football he said he would play. And that's the crux of the issue. And I'll come on to the other things later because no doubt we'll discuss where we go from, from here. Um, it's an interesting point that I just flashed up from Elliot there, and it's something I'm going to come back to with one of the points I've got noted. Um, but Warren, I'm going to come to you next if I can, and and something that we both spoke about before we went live, um, and it was the the perceived goal threat against the actual goal threat, and this and what I at least I, I don't know if all the panelists will agree, but would describe as a distinct lack of intensity. Yeah. I don't know. Don't get me wrong, I agree with what Rich said about with uh, Lindsay. Some of his tactical decisions, substitutions were nowhere near what you needed them to be. Um, but it's got to come from the players as well. There's only so much Lindsay can tell them. You're against 10 men. And, you know, what I mean, basics are that you know they're going to sit in and create two banks of four and be very difficult to beat. So you need to be moving them side to side and creating the gaps for you to do. So what you do is you pass with intensity, you move with intensity. Everything needs to be done a lot, lot quicker. Uh, and we just didn't do that. So, I, you know, I mean, I can understand blame on Lindsay, but I think the players have got to take some slack as well. Do you know what I mean? Because it wasn't good enough. It, there was too many sideways passes with no, not enough, not enough tempo. Uh, and it was just easy for Gillingham, really. They were just e e easy to move side to side and they would just cut us out and stop us. And we would panic. We got into the positions and we would be like, we froze. We didn't know. We, there was no decisive decisive pass from one of our creative players. We, You know what I mean? We, we barely created anything. And that was the concern. But like I've alluded to on previous things, it's, it's not easy playing against 10 men, especially as early as we went down. Because I know everyone's saying we had 80 minutes to break down 10 men. I get that. But Gillingham's game plan went straight out the window and they... They were playing for a point from 10 minutes in. I would just argue and say, again, from my perspective, and, and I wasn't there like Rich was, so he will have a completely different perspective for me. Particularly in the first half, I, would, I wouldn't I would say that they were camped in their own box defending, and I would actually argue they had the better chances. No, no. I, I, mostly would probably have been seen from a counter-attack where we've competed to some bodies forward. But it was the concern was for us that there was no urgency, there was no like intense... You know what I mean? We didn't do nothing. And that was the massive concern for me. But I don't think this should all be put at Lindsay's door. Uh, you know what I mean? And I don't, I can't see how the players can't take some slack as well because the key word is intensity. We didn't move the ball quick enough. We didn't move them side to side to create the gaps that we needed to break through. Yes, we needed two forward play thinking players at the top end of the pitch, definitely in the second half, and that didn't come. We should have sacrificed a centre midfielder. We didn't need three in the middle of the park. We needed the ball going wide and then getting into the box to make them defend. And we didn't do that enough. And that's why we didn't deserve to win the game. And that's that. Should have, sacri should have sacrificed bloody shade. Fucking yeah. heck. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, no I, I you, mean, don't, I'm you just... don't need to apologise, Rich. You say all you oh, like, as I've God. said plenty and been shot down he was for the it. most frustrating player I've seen, honestly. What I'll, I didn't I'll leave it, I'll that. leave it. Why that. didn't he? Why didn't he said that Hutton's a winger? So why didn't he yeah. bring Hutton on for shade? I don't. You know, what I mean, Honestly, we've all seen that Hutton sure. can put a decent ball into the box. We've watched it at mm. a couple of home games. He's actually got a good delivery on him. Mm. So I don't see if it, it, obviously it wasn't going well for shade. So the change was there to be <laughs> made. Statement. You know what I yeah. Mean? Yeah, um, and also we were we were, like you said in the second half they were camped in their uh, in their own box, long throw. Come on, I mean, like bring well Hutton says that he's got a long throw. It's sort of like a drifting some, long throw. I was throw, reading a comment, so. and some guy made a decent point saying that if you wanted to go a bit more direct, which was fine, if they wanted to get the ball forward quicker, and we didn't have that target man mould, why couldn't we have put? I know it sounds stupid, but gone back to the days we could have put could have chucked McDonald up there. Put a centre back I mean? up there, if, yeah. My point. My if, point. If he, yeah, if he would have done something like that. You know, I mean, the crowd maybe have not would have got would have seen that Lindsay was trying to do something to win the game, but mm. there just wasn't nothing from the manager or from the players that really showed that we were going to try and win the game. Go a bit Tom Broadbent on the situation. Yeah, very, yeah, very creative. Yeah, had to be. It could have come off, couldn't it? It could have. 
Um, I've got a quick, sorry, just before you go on to the next point there. Yeah, no, uh, no worries. Yeah, just got a quick question. Um, did anybody, because uh, I, I didn't actually get a chance to read uh, or listen to Lindsay's post-match interview, but did he yes. mention anything, did he mention anything about uh, Jacob Wakeland uh, at all? No, because, apparently he's my head injury, Oh right, okay. Oh, that makes a little bit of sense then, because he did go down injured just before he went yeah. off. He, he no, taken wasn't... a couple of knocks before before he went right. down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Craig, I mean, I'm, still... I'm going to come to you next, and I'm just going to re-highlight a comment that was on the screen a second ago. Um, and, and while I do that, I'm just going to also tell you uh, what Paddy has sent us on Twitter. Um, part of me almost feels for Lindsay at this point because he is way out of his depth. I don't think Day and Gunning add anything on the touchline at all, really. Uh, just need to see a difference Saturday because Newport will be bang up for it. Now, uh, Rich mentioned there about the post-match. You very quickly shared it in our WhatsApp chat and had a lot to say on the situation. Yeah, I mean, yeah, anyone who's, who's seen that, just, um, as um, Garvino said there, he, he looked like a broken man. He he was, you, you didn't need to be a body language expert to know that that's someone who's defeated, which I know we've all got our own views about our form so far, but it just seemed a bit strange for someone who's only a month into the job, has only lost once and is like, you know, after... And, 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 you know, my opinion, I, I don't think it is a good record, um, Fifey. But it just seems strange that he was broken by that already. And he just had a transfer window where he'd got basically everywhere that we needed covered was was covered. But he was just looking at the floor. He wasn't looking at the reporter who was asking the questions. It was like he was a petulant child, to be honest with you. And he got quite short with the uh, with um, with the BBC reporter. And as, as we know, BBC... Wilts um, sports aren't exactly known for their probing questions. They they weren't, you, you, you know what I mean. They really, you know they weren't exactly tough questions he, he was asking. Like he didn't ask um, why you know why didn't he start Darcy for instance. You, you, you know so that you know it wasn't exactly. But yeah, he, but his responses to a couple of them were quite short one 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 word um, answers. And um, I, my concern is that. Um, Clem and, um, and and Rob would have seen that interview. The players would have seen that interview. So what's going through their heads? They're going, going to look at that thinking, you know, Christ, you know, he, he's he's lost it. He's 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 gone. He, he's you know, he's a dead man walking pretty much. And that's not going to be good for the players to see that. Um, but yeah, I, I just I, I my my heart went out to him to be honest because you saw I saw him and I was just like he he. He, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he looked like his his um, confidence was was shot to bits, um, to be honest. And um, yeah, that I, once I saw that, I was thinking. I, you know, I know we said on the last pod we'd give him until end of September, October time. But I think the next defeat is gonna. That's it. He's gone. If we lose to Newport on Saturday, wow. he'll be gone. Uh, th I think I no. I, I think it will. If you're if you're Clem and Rob and you see your manager, your the, the guy you're employing to um, to manage your team to get you, a, and, and it's a results driven business, and we've seen how toxic it, it can get at the county grounds. I'm telling you now, if we lose on Saturday, he'll be gone. I think it definitely will need to be reviewed. Put it that way. I think I think his, I think his position will definitely be reviewed. I don't know whether or not it will be very much determined but uh, i think uh clem and rob will definitely be having some kind of discussions um but yeah i'm, I'm not advocating for it i'm not no no yeah that, absolutely not, no. I, I think that's i just think that's the way I've, i haven't seen an interview what? like that the, the last mm. the last time i saw an interview like that was uh, not not even sheridan and poor heart you know and um yeah but i i, I agree I, partly I, with what um uh um, was it what Warren was saying about that the players have to have some of the responsibility as well? I do agree with that. Um, you know, I, I also think that this team just isn't good enough. It is not good enough. Mm -hmm. You can you can't honestly tell me that our first eleven is stronger than the first eleven that finished in the second leg against Port Vale in in the playoffs. Because surely we should be looking to progress from last season. And that should be automatics mm. on, on top of last season. 
this the squad's stronger in depth, yeah. But our strongest mm. first eleven is nowhere near good as what it was last season. Even the, we, we had two players start on Saturday who started the second leg playoff game against Port Vale, just two players. So it tells me that, all right, we've had some good signings come in, Bryn, Wakelin, but the rest of them are either average or, mm. or, or worse in, in, in my view. And even the players from last season who were so good aren't performing as well. Louis Reed is nowhere near the uh, the standard as what he should have been last season. Um, I think you know, Ben Gladwin. People talk about Ben Gladwin like he's come back from a scene in Cocoon, which <laughs> if, you're, if you're under the age of thirty five, you probably won't get that reference. But <laughs> I thought last season that the stick that Ben Gladwin got was out of order. I don't think he was as bad as what people made out. He was below average in a very, very good team that was performing well. Now he is above average in a team that is playing below average. He's doing all right, but he's not this super player that people are making him out out to be. Because if all these players who we've got in are really as good as we think they are and are performing as well, and we're performing as well as what we think we've been saying in all these games where we've been drawing, then why have we only won one game? Mm. Um, I, th- I think a lot of the points you make there, Craig, are are incredibly fair um, and and honest and true. Um, do I think you'll be sacked if we don't win at the weekend? No, I think the calls from the the stands may be a lot louder, and we did start to hear a few. There were a couple of videos shared on yeah, social yeah. media. I, I think I personally think, I thought that was. Bang out of order that to be honest. With you. I I didn't agree with that at all. I think it's way too early on. But also I think if we do lose on Saturday, um, I think we'll now see what um I'm trying to think of the word, but uh what Clem will actually come out with, like sort of thing. Will it will he actually come out with anything? Um because uh the ball's in his court now. Obviously, he's the He's the owner. He makes it well. Either him or um, Angus are going to make the decision. Either way, he won't. Panic. He won't panic. I, yeah, this is it. This is it. I, that's panic. what I mean. I don't. I don't think. I don't think he yeah. will. I don't, I don't think, think he will. He will so. But also, I think because uh, I mean, he could have potentially sacked Garner uh, during the start of this year, and he didn't do it, and he let it, let it just carry on, and we got to the playoffs in the end. So. I don't know. I'm not saying that's going to happen with Lindsay. It probably won't. Um, it's very hard to tell because it is still really early on in the season. So I think only time will tell. But I do feel that the next two home games, uh, Newport and Sutton, are massively crucial. Um, I, I still want to keep it as, as best as we can to, to the Gillingham focus just for a couple more minutes, if I may. And Ben... You've waited very patiently. I've I've purposely saved you till last. And I want to highlight a comment that came in earlier that I haven't put on the screen yet. Um, You know my thoughts on this. Um, I just need to scroll back up every one second. Um, But it's about if anyone has the ability to change my mind on the next thing I'm about to say is you. I absolutely (laughs) agree with on that. And it is that can you tell me what I'm missing in shade? I don't think Shade's played. Oh. <laughs> I honestly don't. I think he's had one good game in like the piece of paint. I don't think he's played very well at all. I don't think he's worth his place in the side. I'm, I'm okay. not going to argue. We agree. Ben, we agree. <laughs> we agree. I think, I think he had a great game in the piece of paint, but that's against a um, <laughs> under-21 seed uh, who were pretty gash, if I'm quite honest. And, um, yeah, I, I don't think Shade's worth his place in the squad, and I wouldn't play him next week. Um, what, and, and, what were your thoughts on the, the game as a whole? Yeah, yeah, I have a few points about Gillingham. Um, Lindsay, uh, the biggest disappointment I think I had, so after 70 minutes, I think you should, in a game like that, you should approach a game like you're 1-0 down going into the last 20. Um, I think the lack of uh, just trying everything different, a different formation, a different ideas. I was going to say what was it says and stuck McDonald up front and fight for scraps and look for knock-ons. Um, we've got a poacher and Jeff Cott, who Plymouth fans say he works better off another striker 
Um, he scores goals. He's a poacher. And he's done for him to work off. That didn't happen. Um, we need to give. We need to push more bodies in the box. We need to get the bo ball in the box quicker. We need to work them faster. That didn't happen. That's down to the manager. And he did come across as defeatist and um, quite depressed. Um, one on 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 another note on his job. One of the promises Sandro made pre-season, he says, what can you expect from Swindon? What, why are Swindon fans going to buy a season ticket next season? And Sandro said, um, this se next season will be all out attacking football. We'll be played good, fast, attacking, exciting we football. Don't. He's not delivered. He has not done no. that. In fact, it's going to start with a few fans will start to, to get to... Uh, not turn up and when that happens and Liam's going to agree with me he's going to pop up with his mission the day that the the, the um the attendances start to drop a little bit um that's when he'll go um because that's when it starts actually hitting us in the pocket a little bit and we start drifting away um I also think the squad I I disagree with the squad with Craig a little bit with the squad I think we are a little bit better than he made out um i think we just need tweaks rather than wholesale um surgery <laughs> i think i i think a lot of the squad's very good i don't think our first 11 is as good as last 11 but last season we had a squad of about 13 14 players that were the best in the league and then it dropped off this season we have a squad of about 18 19 players that are quite good really good for this level we don't have any superstars we don't have a mckenna a mccurdy we don't have a pain but that's 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 all really that we're missing. We've got a goal scorer on Jeff Cott. His goal, he's got a hundred. He played a hundred games for Plymouth. Um, and he's twenty-two years old. He's a renowned goal scorer in League One. He can score goals in League Two if we create chances for him. So the goals from McCurdy we're not going to miss. Yeah. We're just a different side. We're set up differently. We we've got different different parts of our team are have improved. We've lost parts, obviously, with pain and Goethe, but we have got better in other parts. And the squad wise, it is better as well. So we can do well this season. The squad needs tweaking and the right manager will push up in the right direction. Um I just want to before we, we carry on with the last bit, which is the first question we've had submitted for tonight, which I'll open up to all of you, uh just to throw in some of the comments we've had um on Twitter. Um sorry for those watching on Twitter. For some reason YouTube comments have worked since we started. Facebook comments I've seen are working the first time we've gone live on Facebook. For some reason, Twitter comments aren't coming up on the live feed, but I am seeing them, the ones that are being posted. So I am keeping that refreshed as well. Um, Nick, your number one fan, Danielle, said, yes, King Nick. Uh, he speaks and we shall listen. Uh, a lot of people happy with you doing the intro today. Um, Appreciate it. Paddy replied uh, to the comments on when we, we spoke about his earlier point, I get we've only lost one game, but it's the inability to win a game that has to change. Can't go on with if we don't lose, we draw games, has to change and change from this weekend. Um, Claire's also been in touch. Um, she was the one, thank you, Claire, for pointing out that the Twitter comms really aren't working. And it's going to take me some time to work out why. Um, but she just went on regarding the post-match. Um, it could have been contributed as a result to the fans booing him. Um may have explained his his mood and his attitude towards that interview um so that, that i think that is equally a valid point keep sending in your uh your, your tweets and we will i am keeping an eye on them and we'll bring them up um john who has been on the pod a few times sent us in a question and and i'll open it up to whoever wants to answer this um he said 50 percent of the newbies do appear to be good but what is wrong with the team as a whole? Is it the tactics? Is it the fitness? Is it the players and their individual attitude? Um, and then he also goes on to say, is it anything to do with the number twos who seem more interested in doing keep-ups during the warm-up than actually preparing the players for the game? Uh, Rich, do you want to start and then we'll see where it goes? Just repeat that for me again, please, uh, Fifey. The whole thing? Uh, no, just the yeah, just the actual just, yeah. just yeah, the number the two's top, doing yeah. keep ups in the warm up. Uh, he no, just really asked, what, "What's wrong?" He just asked, "What's wrong with the team? Why is it not quite happening yet?" I, I know everyone's refraining from using the word beginning with G that riles Woody because yeah, like, he's uh, in the chat. But uh, what what yeah, I, yeah, I, do I, you I, think I, is wrong? I, I, I just say it to annoy Woody now, but. Um... <laughs> Love you, Woody. Um, no, uh, uh, again, 
you know, you've got you've got to have that determination as a manager to get the best out of your team. Um, and, you know, I don't know, maybe some of the players that were here last year, maybe they were expecting something better uh, than Scott Lindsay coming in. Uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, the Louis Reed that we saw last year, um, I, I, he's gone, obviously. I think I think it was Warren that uh, mentioned it earlier, or Craig. Um, he's gone completely missing this season. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's no bonding in the team. There's. It just seems to be the same basic football uh, every single game, and there's there's just absolutely nothing. There's nothing going forward. Um, there's not not there's not a lot of there's not a lot of creativity in the team. Um, I think I, I I think something seriously needs to be well, needs to be looked at. I tell you what, if he doesn't start Darcy on Saturday, then if, mm. if he did get sacked for us getting beaten, I wouldn't feel for, for him because <laughs> Darcy needs to be starting in that game. He's one of the few players who can show some actual creativity, creativity. which yeah. is what we've been lacking, really. He mm. needs to go, you know, play him instead of Shade or play him instead of, you know, in, in midfield in the old Jack Payne position. I don't care, but he needs to start, you know, and um, or this. I think it's a combination of, of, of obviously having the right players in, Lindsay's tactics and, and, and stuff like that. With the coaches, this has come about quite quite a bit. I, I don't know. I'm not I'm not disagreeing with anyone, but a lot I, I don't understand where this has come from about the coaches. I haven't been to the games to actually see the coaches in, in oh, action. What? So, All of them talking. Is that what well, you mean? Not just that. No, but that the, the comment was made about like during the warm ups, a lot of the coaches seem more interested in just doing keepy ups and actually preparing the players for the game. Right. And that they're not experienced enough and, and, mm. and everything else. There has been a lot of comment about the team that Lindsay's got around him and, and, and all, but I, I don't mm. I, I don't know whether that could have a, have an effect on on you know on, on why we are not I, doing. I that. did. I did read a message. Uh, I did read a tweet on uh, Twitter earlier saying we've got an inexperienced manager with an inexperienced, whatever Di Michele is, director of football, whatever you want to call it, with an inexperienced assistant manager, uh, the most experienced person on that um, on that touchline is uh, is uh, is Mildenhall. Um, you know, and it's you. You can understand why it's. You can understand the inexperience uh, in that backroom staff. Um, can, can I just point out to some of the? Uh, it was a comment that I saw online as well about about the game, and um, this was on the. I, I think it was on the club's Facebook page. Data driven football is only meaningful if the goal scored column is healthy. High possession rates and passes completed means nothing without goals, and I think Very that, true. and that and that so that yeah. sums it up for me, you know. And um, so that's that's a combination of not having the right players, um, the co um, the, the 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 coach, the manager, whatever you want to call him, whatever coaching's going on on the pitch. I, I think it's a whole combination. But ultimately, as we've said time and time before, it's a results driven business, and the buck stops with the manager. I mean, that's, well, that's, that's the main point. It, it's, it is down to Lindsay. Um, Rich, how many did he start with up front on Saturday? Yeah, muted, Rich. Mute. There we go. There you go. Um, yeah, it was, um, so it was one strike. It was a 4 3 3 formation. Um, and so one up top, and obviously Shade and I mean, I, Williams on the left. Yeah, I think that I mean, that's half the problem. It, it's already been said he's setting up not to lose a game rather than going for the win to win a game. And with he needs to get this the rest of this month nine points out of ten. And if we don't do that, that has got to be bye bye because said it last week. We've got, we played Doncaster, um, Bradford, and can't remember the other team now, up, who, who's at the top. Three really tough games next month. Uh, well, Mansfield. And they, they are harder games than we've got this month. So if he doesn't get um, nine, or, um, nine or ten points 
we are going to be plummeting down that league. And like it's already been said, if uh, I'm, in some ways I'm thankful I'm not there Saturday. I'm actually on holiday, so I won't have to suffer another crap performance. So, uh, and you can see the crowd going toxic Saturday if we lose. So um, I've I've already I don't know if you've noticed I've already changed the banner across the bottom as we, we no matter how much I try we definitely seem to want to talk Lindsay, um, and and a point that was sent to me a point that's been made elsewhere and it's even been highlighted in the uh, in the Facebook comments as well. Um, it's under the name Neil, but I'm actually told reliably this is uh, Rachel who's on Twitter. Um, this is the stat. So we have got, after seven games, De Canio had nine points. Lindsay Cooper and Flitcroft all had eight. Are we panicking too early, Ben? Um, well, yeah. we've right to be concerned. They have every right to be concerned. We've won one game. Um, I think there is, a, I think a lot of people are acting like we've lost five of them or six of them. We haven't. I don't think we're a million miles away. Um, I think it's tweaking, whether that's a new manager that does the tweaking. I do think we have the right tools to fire up the league. Um, but there's definitely concern and a question mark over the manager's head. And we are desperate for a, a couple of results to be strung together. Desperate for that. And the body language of the manager, uh, his interviews, um, the, uh, the, the in-game decisions or lack of uh, the formations, um, the lack of identity. Um, there's lots of contributions that have caused an, a, a stuttering start. It's not been disgraceful. It's not been awful because we're not, we're not near bottom, nowhere near bottom, and we're not going to be anywhere near bottom, even after this run of tough games. And I think the run of tough games is actually a good thing because then we get to compete and then we have to play up. And we have to perform against these good sides. And um, I, I think that could be quite a good thing. But um, I think there's a big question mark over the manager. Um, I think there's a right to be concerned. I don't think there's any time for panic, but there's a right to be concerned. Warren, do, uh, what, do you want to jump in at this point? I think I think this is all down to confidence, to be honest. I, I, I think the players hear the whispers. Lindsay in his first jobs hearing the whispers. And I think it's confidence. Just something I wanted to allude to just on the previous subject we were on. About this fast-flowing football, we definitely played it against Rochdale. And I don't yeah. care which of it, who we yeah, played but... against. No, no, but Pfeiffer, that's not the point. It Confidence was brewed in that game because we got gifted an early goal. And then the players, the shackles were off. And they played this intense style, getting in their faces, being difficult, fast-flowing football. And we played really, really well. And I know we say it's Rochdale, but I just think they're lacking that little bit of confidence, that little bit of break that we got against Rochdale where we, we we got ahead. Because in many games, we haven't really got ahead this season and given us that little bit of an oomph where we needed to be. I just think it's a little bit of confidence. And the problem is this confidence isn't going to come until, like you alluded to, we get a couple of wins on the board in a row and then that it can start to breed it. I just think... At the moment, there is a massive panic, and I don't think there needs to be. I think the comment that Neil's put on one of the things is, is an accurate one. I, you know what I mean? With the point sort of thing, you're comparing managers, and a lot of people like to do this. So why wouldn't they look at a point like that? I don't understand. You know what I mean? Paolo lost four of his first five. I don't think there was a mass panic then when it was thing. We're looking at it because... Scott Lindsay and Paolo Di Canio are two different people in the football spectrum. But that, that's the whole point, though, isn't it? That is the whole Warren. point. That is, that, that's yeah. the whole point that we had. I mean, some of the names on the list, I'd agree with probably on a par with Lindsay. But we, we had oh, managers that wanted, wanted to play attacking football. And fans will put up with that if it's not quite coming off and you can see there's some light at the end of that tunnel. At the moment, it's all bloody darkness. You cannot see yeah. any light but I there. think that's and, where sorry. they're desperate to get a result. I think but, that's but where you, they're You said about us not result. going in front. I think I read someone posted the other day, and, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, we've had four 1-1 one, one draws, and we went, went in front on every single one of those. Oh, yeah. good. well, I could so, be wrong. 
um, so I may be wrong, and I'm sure I'm sure that's what I. No, no, because I got sent that as well, and I, I hadn't even clocked that that was the yeah. case. And, and just but to yeah, give if, another, if you can send Orion, Stockport, um, yeah. uh, who did we just play? Gilligan, Carlisle, yeah. Carlisle, and Carlisle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's that's fair. But, I, but just just to give another analogy about about the manager, in and I don't like talking about Premiership when we're talking Swindon, um, but Man United have got a new manager in different philosophy, different way of working, and they've won their last, what was it, four or five games on the bounce? With they more or less the same team. The first couple, though. But they did yeah, get, yeah, they did get Tonk the first couple, so... Yeah, but he's, he's changed it and he's moved it, and we're not doing that. He's had... Mm. We've been pretty poor in all the games. Yeah, We've won one, and you can argue what you said, good attacking football, but we were against the poor side. So it's, That's a really, one of, one, 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 that's that's a really one good of, point, Nick, because... Um, in, you know, because um, Ten Hag, is that how you say his name, the Man United player, uh, Man United manager, he's dropped Harry Maguire and put two, um, the other yeah. two in, and that's worked for them. Yet Lindsay um, insists still on starting Shade when he is clearly not good enough. <laughs> and I said, if he starts again on Saturday, I will, I'll just, I'll, I'll, yeah, well, I'll, I'll flip, to be honest. Sticking with you for a minute. Is, that, I, that is a good analogy, I think, Nick. Sticking with you for a minute, Craig, because I'm just, again, while listening, trying to keep on top, uh, Paddy's been in touch. Yet again, I'm agreeing with Craig. Every point he's made so far is a valid one. He also agrees with Ben in that once attendance is dropped, we'll probably see the board react. And he goes on to say, um, one player not mentioned when, when you're going through the likes of Payne and McCurdy and stuff is Egbo. No one in that team gets stuck in and, and has a go um, like, like Egbo did. Um, and hearing you say about Maguire, Craig, leads me on to a comment we've also had in from um, from Claire. And she puts captaincy aside, McDonald over Baudry. Where does everyone sit on that particular fence? Uh, do we stick? Yeah. Yeah. He looks. I'm, like, I, I, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna start on this one, if you don't mind, because I've got. <laughs> Craig's like, well, I ain't got no choice now. <laughs> sorry, 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 Craig. That's all right, Craig. I'll, 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 I'll be Magnus Magnuson. You started, so now you you can finish. <laughs> um, Again, if you're under the age of thirty-five, you probably wouldn't get that reference. No. <laughs> Which Rich is? Yeah. I mean, m m McDonald. I, I don't know what it is. I was having a conversation with my mate that was with at Gillingham the other day. We're not sure if he's not match fit or not. I don't think match fitness has got anything to do about panicking with the football uh, in the first, literally in the first five, ten minutes. He's, um, he gets the ball, has a couple of heavy touches, bigger touches than he probably should be taking. Striker comes straight into it, takes the ball off as a shot, and we get away with one. We cannot be doing that. We cannot be nervous. We don't have a plan. When we're playing from the back, we don't have a plan with it. Now, do I think McDonald is the answer? Do I think I sh we should be playing him over Baudry? At the moment, I probably would be playing Baudry uh, over uh, over McDonald at the moment. Warren's not having it at all. He's not because I... Well, it's a difficult one because I wouldn't have... Number one, I wouldn't have two left footers in a back four anyway. Um, but also in terms of having McDonald, it's a, it's a tough one. I, I'm not convinced. His first half performances, his second half performances, when we're, well, when we've scored and <laughs> we're trying to defend, he comes into play. He Rich, puts in I, some I am going to. Fantastic gonna... challenges and he puts in, but his passing and his touches with the football is absolutely shocking. I am going to hand it over to Warren next before we open it up to the other guys. But just before I do, Rich, I want your instant reaction to this comment that's just come in on this particular debate, knowing your well, thoughts no. on the uh, on the other name mentioned. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, it is very, very true. Yeah, and I completely agree with it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, so, Warren, you were shaking your head when Rich was, was talking about the um, Donald Baudry situation. I, I, you know all my opinions on McDonald. Um, I think we'd be in a lot worse position if we didn't have him. And that's not coming from his performances, OK? But people have got to remember, we've got not a lot of experience in this team. And that doesn't mean that I don't rate Bowdry because Bowdry is, is an experienced head. But he, 
McDonald, he didn't have a preseason, so you've got to give him that little bit of a chance, that little bit of leeway there for me personally, because he's come into a club and he's took the armband on. So that shows how highly respected he is within the game anyway. He's a leader. You know, I mean, I think people forget that every time we sign a centre half, are we expecting them to be this worldy ball player every time? I'm sorry. That's, a centre that's half. who we seem to sign, though. That's who we seem to sign, though, yeah, Warren. But he's not a cent- he's not he's not one of those that have been preached to be this worldy centre half on the ball. I want a centre half at the back that's going to head everything, chuck himself in front of everything. And from what I've seen at McDonald so far, he does chuck himself into challenges. He wins his 50 50s. You know what I mean? We'd all love a ball playing centre half. Don't get me wrong, but at the moment, I just want someone that's going to defend and be difficult to beat, to difficult to concede goals against. And for me, he is a leader, and I think that will come to fruition as the season goes on. And then I think you ask this in a couple of months' time. I think that it will be on a different side of the coin with McDonald. I think everyone will see why we have got him on board because I'm sorry, you don't play at the top end of a championship and be a leader for them it, and then come down to a league club and deserve to get slandered. The Conroy mm. comment, I don't really get it because Conroy was with us a long period of time. We knew what Conroy was about and he built his way up to become captain at the football club. And I'm not a Conroy hater, don't get me wrong, but this is a guy that's just walked through our door. We've given him the armband. Let's give him a chance. Do you know what I mean? And not be trying to chuck him out of the team straight away. He's our captain. That's the way it's going to stay. So get on board and and go with it because that's how it's going to be. The problem I've got with that, Warren, is the fact that it doesn't suit the way that we're playing, though, because we're playing out from the back. And if you can't have it, if you've not got a defender that can play out out from the back, then what's the point? We're not in this league to be defending for the whole game. That's great. That's great. Is Bowdry the answer? Is Bowdry the answer then? I'm not saying Bowdry's the answer. I'm not saying Bowdry's the answer, but I'm saying there has to be question marks as to why we brought McDonald in. If he's not a ball playing player, he's a leader. and that's he's a, leader. he's a leader. That's oh, that's great. We've got a leader. But if you can't, if you've got a leader that can defend but can't play with the football, which is the way that we're trying to play, then what's the bloody point? Um, Claire has been listening to the debate and has followed up. Um, Because she's uh, very engaged in this particular one and and has gone on again to say, I think most of McDonald's best stuff is a result of his worst stuff, uh, as in making up for his own mistakes. Uh, Ben, do you want to add anything into this before I I move on to the next question for you all? Can I add something? (laughs) Yeah, the McDonald. um, I think he's he's, he's naturally a good player. Um, I think uh, the Rotherham games pretty much gave him a seal of approval, but he says he needs time after he's had it basically a year out to get back to full speed again. Um, I think we give him that. Uh, he's, he's, he didn't, he's not had not had a preseason. He's not had football for a year, so I think in the running games he will get better. He's a championship player. Uh, Craig, I did actually offer you the question first. Rich interrupted, then it went round everybody. It's come back to you now. And that's all right. We should start a new hashtag. Let Craig speak, I think. We'll <laughs> never do that. Well, firstly, McDonald and Baldry, I mean, trying to decide which one of them two, it's, it's like trying to decide between Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak for Prime Minister. <laughs> um, I mean, I've got to be honest with you. McDonald, yeah, he's a great leader, but he's not as good as Conroy based on his performances so far. So last season we had a captain who wasn't a leader, apparently, but was a quality centre-back, in my view. Whereas this season, McDonald, he hasn't played bad, but he's done nothing to impress me. And as it, you know, he was put under a lot of pressure in that first 10 minutes. And I'll tell you what, it was a good job Gillingham did go to that, down to 10 men, because I reckon they could have nicked a result off of us, because Clayton and McDonald were struggling with Casket and Reeves and um, uh, the big guy that got up front, Mandron. Mandron. They, they were causing a lot of problems. So it was a good job they went down to 10 men because I think they might have grinded out a result against us. So, I I mean, in all seriousness, though, I, I think we should keep 
um, McDonald's in instead of Baldry. Baldry should have retired at the end of last season like he intended to. So I don't think he's going to recreate the form that he had at the end of last season. It's so it's so easy being a football fan, isn't it? Because for for most of last season, we were all like, yeah, let him retire. He had a phenomenal end to the season. Everyone's like, I really wish he stays. He stays. Everyone's like, you know what? That's great news. And he's not even in the team. And it's like, you know what? He should have retired. And I do think that's maybe a bit harsh. Well, no, I, 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 I'm, doing, I'm saying that for his own good because I don't want his legacy to be tarnished. It, to be, to be tarnished. Because let's face it, a year ago, this time last year, he was a, he was a figure of ridicule amongst the fan base. And then he won all the hearts and minds towards the end. So that's the main reason why I'm, I'm saying it. You know, obviously it's his life. He decides what he wants to. Um, finally, on, on a separate point about the, the Lindsay's uh, records compared to uh, other managers, I think a lot of it doesn't help that the last two draws have felt like defeats. And that's, that's the problem why I think that um, it, it's, there's a lot less patience. The Stockport game and obviously Gillingham game they felt like defeats, and and that's the issue. And and unfortunately, I think he is on on borrowed time. Whether that's harsh or not, that's I think that's the reality. Ben, did you have your hand up wanting to speak before I ask the next question, or because it's yeah, still no, on the I, same sort of subject? I just wanted to make one little point, though. We're having this big debate, and like our defenders and what's gone wrong, and why aren't they working as they should? We have only let three goals in six games. I think one of the things <sighs> that is doing all right. It's, no, we're not conceding. They can't be. We can't be awful at the back and then let three goals in in ninety two hundred and seventy minutes. I'll it, check it, red it, at that five. That's a valid point. It's a valid. I, point. I I think we've been more than fortunate that that total is not. We yeah, are very we lucky. Have, this is the reason our goalkeeper is player of the month. Yeah. I, I got well, a lot he, of messages. So after I posted, world, though, after I, I posted I think the that's other more day, down to Bryn than than, yeah. than our after I posted the other too. day that I was delighted for him getting Player of the Month after the Harrogate game, the amount of messages I got back saying, your goalkeeper should never be your Player of the Month, this is how bad we are, sums up I, people's I, mentality to that. I agree, I agree, but I, I will still say the point that he's not hes not a Premier League goalkeeper, he's still a League Two goalkeeper. You know, its he, he's played brilliantly, he's contributed, but he's not the sole reason why we've been quite tidy at the back. And we have been tidy. It is not all shit. There is some good points about the season. This is so why far. we love no, you, Ben. Really positive. Positive. I mean, it I, was I didn't two, say it was shit. Two weeks ago, it was only two weeks ago we were saying that Clayton and McDonald looked like a decent centre-half partnership. I, you know I, I mean? still we like Clayton. Going, yeah, yeah. We played a couple, and I, yeah, a couple of games and it looked like this was the one that we were pinning ourselves down to. Um, you know, I mean, about the point about the defence... You can say that, oh, they were really going at them and attacking them, but that's got to be helped. If we're saying that the player that's struggling at the moment is Louis Reed, that used to be that protection in front of the back four, if mm. that's gone and there's no protection there, of course the defence are going to be isolated and running at. You know what I mean? If there's no one there and we were saying that shade isn't good going back, so there's runners coming from everywhere, you know what I mean? Something's got to change in the midfield and it's whether he's bold well, enough to drop Reed if he doesn't think he's in good enough form. Specifically on that point, specifically on that point, so that the second part of the Lindsay debate that I got asked, and, and I got asked it a couple of different ways by different people, um, particularly um, Mike and, and my brother Rich, when we were having a very, very extensive debrief Saturday evening, um, is what would you change? If we were in his position, what would you change? And, and Mike also tweeted, and, and he actually put it out generally, but sent it to me and said, could you ask the guys this on the next show? Um, if, every, if everyone was fit, what would you change? So I, I will happily put myself out there to be shot at. I created this little picture, um, and, and this is the, the team I would go with, and I put a couple of little explanations. And as to your earlier point, I have kept McDonald and Clayton together. Um, I've put, I've kept FBT at, at left back. I have put um, possibly Divine. I, I haven't seen him, so I can't comment. I've actually took Reed out. You'll notice to put Khan in that position and just put because Reed's so out of form. Darcy over Gladwin. I've put Iandolo cannot come back quick enough. He really cannot yeah. come back quick enough. And then I've got Wakelin and Hepburn Murphy supporting Jeffcott. What do we? 
Do we think that's somewhere near our strongest 11 if everyone was fit? Or, or would you be inclined to disagree, um, Nick? Let's go to you first. It's difficult to say because um, some of the players we haven't seen, so we don't really know what, what they're like. I, I think we need to give Khan a pivotal role and sitting behind the strikers. I think we need to play two strikers side by side. So we've got an attacking option and we need to get a winger in there. Now, whether that's the young lad from Banbury, we just don't know how he's going to turn out. He was only playing, what, two leagues below us. He could be the diamond that we're looking for. We just That's the problem. We just don't know at the moment. But I think whatever, whatever team he puts out, this is the time to be brave with it and, and give it a give it a good go. go. And, and I think I'll, I'll just go back to what I've said before. It is down to the manager. The manager sets up how he wants the team to play. He will give them instructions. He will train them all week. They will have their tactics. They will have their formation. And it's all down to him. Now, players can take responsibility once they cross that white line and they're on the pitch. And we should have, you know, Williams, Reed, uh, Gladwin, experienced players should be able to uh, grab the game by the scruff of the neck and make something happen. But to me, whatever we do, it's down to the tactics and how the manager wants them to play. And, and we're not playing that free-flowing attacking football. That's the problem. Um, let's go to Craig next. What? Obviously, you had the graphic up there of, of the team I picked. How, how far away would that be for you? Um, I think back four is... Probably right, yeah. I, I think Blake Tracy has probably been one of our best signings, to be honest. Um, he's, he's another one who got ripped apart after the first yeah. game and has really turned people's opinions. I, I, I like him. I want us to get him okay. on the permanent, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah, he's, he's really good. Um, I think, as people have alluded to, I think the midfield three is an issue. And I think that... Um, has, um, has Minton gone on low? Yeah, he's about to go to Gloucester. Ah, oh, damn. See, I, I'd put him in, in for Reed. Yeah, I like him. I, I would put him in for Reed and have Khan yeah. and um, Iandolo in the midfield three, um, have Wakelin, um, Darcy, and um, Jeff Cott up front. I, I, th I think that would give us enough attacking intent, but with enough steel in midfield and, and creativity, yeah, I, I think that would strike the perfect balance for, for, for me. Okay, Ben? Um, what I did like about your team that you popped up, all the big guns missing, Gladwin, Williams, Reed, and that just shows you actually there is depth in our squad and it's actually, if they get going, it could be pretty good. Um, I think that's definitely an option. I like that team. I think 4-3 built for McCurdy. Um, I like to see us bone back to a diamond. Um, maybe have a pivotal role and then a number 10. Uh, and then you've got Ricky A, um, Slick Rick, that can also get involved that play number 10 and get involved in that midfield as well. Um, so I, I'd like that. But the three is also an option, something we can do. We've got options. We've got attacking. We've got we've got cover on all positions. It's pretty good like that. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely an option. I wouldn't be against seeing that line up. Um, if we went for a, a diamond as well, I'd be happy. So I've got no complaints with that. Uh, Rich, you've you've seen quite a bit already this season. How far away was my team from what you would pick? Yeah, I think um, I, I'd obviously I'd like to see that team actually play. Um, I think, uh, like you say, I think Gladwin. Either way, I'd, I'd quite like to see him start, and I think he offers us something quite a bit. Um, Hepburn Murphy would be an interesting one when he actually comes in. Um, Obviously, none of us have actually seen him properly play yet. We've obviously seen his highlights. We know what he could potentially offer to us. Um, if it's a possible McCurdy style like, I think that will be very, very handy. Um, so I think he'll be one to wait and see, and hopefully he will be available for the Newport game. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I, like I say, you want to see something different and you want to see sort of a statement from Lindsay now because what he's done, yeah. what he's got so far, hasn't really worked. It's worked in some aspects, but it hasn't delivered him that final, you know, result that we want. We want the three points at the end of the day. So anything different... 
even if it's just a test. I mean, at this point of in this point of the season, it's worth a go. If it was April and we were struggling, there's no point. But might as well try it now, see if it works, at least for a couple of games. You never know what can happen. And Ghana did that. Ghana did that a couple of times last season. You've got to experiment with your squad. Not make ridiculous changes or an awful lot of changes, but make some changes that could potentially enhance the squad to go get those three points on a Saturday or a Tuesday night. And I think that's what uh, we've got to do now. And, uh, and Warren? Uh, I like your team, Pifey. The only concern for me is that I would maybe switch Ellis and Khan because I feel that Khan is okay. pivotal to if we're going to play that pressing style. I think Khan is, you know what I mean, is that is that one that it, he's that box to box midfielder, and I don't think he should be restricted. And I kind of feel with Nick's point, when he's got towards the top end of the park, Khan, he's been that one with a bit of composure on the ball for us that's been yeah. able to slide a pass down the sides and you know what I mean, and has looked very good. I think Ellis could play that holding role well. I really do. I think he's got energy. I think he doesn't shy away from a tackle. He's quite neat and tidy on the ball. I think the concern for Reed at the moment and the concern for Lindsay, I don't think he's got anyone to replace Reed in that position. And Craig made a good point about Minto. And I just they probably feel this just his lack of experience, you know what I mean, could be the reason why he's, he's he needs to go out on loan and get some games, obviously. But I the Reed is probably at the moment, he probably will start on Saturday because there's the, it's the two positions in front that Lindsay's going to keep flipping with, like the Gladwins, the Darcy's, the Aguiars. You know what I mean? I don't think anyone can play that Louis Reed position, but I think I think Ellis could be a very good shout there. He's got energy, loves a tackle, neat and tidy on the ball. You know what I mean? I don't see any reason why he possibly couldn't get a chance in that position. Or what we could do is put Clayton into the defensive that midfield. Was another one. Then that, was that, that solves the McDonald Baldry um, question, doesn't it? Because they can play together. Oh, no. I wouldn't play them together. I'd... <laughs> <laughs> Warren straight in there. Oh, no. <laughs> I I'm like joking. It may, it may give a chance to our guy, Kean Harris, to come in and play left sided defense yeah, centre half. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it, or it opens it up for Brennan if we're going to be all diplomatic and sort of who gives a chance. But Clayton was built up to be this centre defensive mid and centre midfielder. He offered us a lot of flexibility. I think that's a great point, Craig. You know what I mean? Clayton could yeah. be the answer in there. It's, it's just that we need him at centre back. Uh, I, yeah. I was half joking because we do need him at centre. No, back. but I, I think it, I think you've opened it up. I think that could be a potential option. Do you know what I mean? I just don't think Lindsay at the moment has got the confidence in the other centre half, such as Brennan and Harris, to maybe change it. But yeah. Clayton was brought in with that versatility in mind, so that's a, it's a great point. I think it's a great shout. I, I really do. Um, okay, let's move on if we can, and uh, and let's do our our weekly STWFC update. Um, there was just the one game, as we alluded to, on Friday at the weekend. And um, I know Woody was about in the chat. I don't know if he still is. He may want to close his ears just for a minute. Um, I did receive a um, a message um, from from his friend and and friend of the pod, Mike. Um, Woody's tenure has got off to a worse start than Scott Lindsay's did. Um, Unfortunately uh, for his development side, they were on the end of a 9-1 defeat away at Bridgewater. Um, but anyone who follows Woody on his socials will see, um, you know, it is a difficult step up and they were very tough opposition that his side came up against. Um, and and it's still, it's very early and, and they're learning, I think is the message because it is a step up. Um, from where they were. Um, so let's not dwell on that. Instead, he sent us a very extensive, um, an extensive write-up of what's to look forward to this week. And Rich, I know you've got a, a few comments as well. Um, so he's put, this week is packed. The development have a friendly against the Army development tomorrow at Fairford. The first have a friendly against the Army first at Lynham on Thursday. 
The under 18 start their Oxford League campaign away at Somerton All Stars on Saturday morning. Development away in the Reserve League Cup to Oxford United Development. And the first are away in the League Cup to London Seaward. Think their Leighton Orient kind of area. Um, so plenty of fixtures if you are out and about um, over the next few days. Uh, Rich, from your perspective, what, what would you like to, uh, to add in Woody's absence? Um, <laughs> um, not an awful lot. Um, like I say, <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it seems as if that, uh, obviously, um, I think in terms of the Woody's team, um, they're, they're obviously under 18s, they're playing against uh, uh, in a reserves league, and um, these reserve players they, they will have they will have been playing um, a lot more than this team that Woody's got. <laughs> Woody's just message, just say, be careful, Woody out. Um, <laughs> What I would say um, before you, really before you finish your point there, Rich, what I would say is people are going to be begging us not to sponsor them next season, aren't they? I mean, we sponsor Harry's, he gets sent off. We sponsor Woody, he loses 9-1. <laughs> I, I think it has to be pointed out from what Woody's told us that they're, they're in a very difficult league. So I think he, 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 worked, yeah. he is expecting it to be tough. He's got a very, very young side in, in that development. And that's, you know, it's, it's the, the, the clue's in the name. It's development. It's about developing um, players who are ready to go into the first team. So, and a, and a few of them played last um, last week when, when the girls won 2 1 that we spoke about. So they, you know, they, they, they are, you know, he's got some good players there. And um, hopefully that will just be a one off that defeat and um, the, the team can, can go from strength to strength. But it is a tough mm -hmm. league. And, they they knew that at the beginning of the season, so hope hopefully they they will develop and improve as the season goes on. Definitely, he's on got he's got a few. Um, he, uh, I was just going to say he's definitely got. Uh, sorry, Ben, um, he's got a few experienced um, players coming into the uh, squad tomorrow um, that I know that are playing or they're apparently playing. Um, so hopefully he might be able to get. Um, it'd be great to see him get a good. Good result tomorrow. Obviously, at home to Fairford as well. Uh, at home at Fairford. Sorry. Um, so, it'd be, uh, it'd be really good to see uh, the girls get a good win. Absolutely. Well, we wish all of the, the uh, teams this coming week the very best of luck. Let's have a look ahead to the weekend then, shall we? And Nick, let's bring you in. Um, am I right in thinking? I think you may have mentioned it earlier, actually. Um, this is the one of the fixes you're missing because you booked a holiday in the middle of the season, you madman. Shocking. I know, and I booked it when we've got two home games that week. <laughs> so I missed Saturday <laughs> and Tuesday. And, uh, well, the only thing I can say, the way it's been going, it might be a godsend. So it saved me getting depressed on a Saturday and a Tuesday. Um, so, yeah, so I'll be, I'll, I'll be missing both of those games, unfortunately. So it wasn't great timing, but hey-ho, it's my own fault by not checking the fixture list first. As my dear wife told me, well, it's your own bloody fault. You booked it. So, <laughs> yeah. there, there, there we go. Um, as, as for the game, I mean, it, it, I, I don't know, really. It's To me, it's just going back and I'll, I'll keep repeating it. It's all down to the tactics and the formation that Lindsay puts out there. Yes, agree with Ben. We have got the players that, that can, can win a game. We have got some League 2 fairly decent players maybe some of them aren't as good as we thought they were going to be um but there is the makings of a team there but to me next two games has got to be six points however he does it it can be a scrappy shitty 95th minute goal to win it don't care we have got to win both those games simple as that mm. uh ben let's uh let's get your thoughts on it yeah, well, I'm hoping that he puts anything that's previous gone behind him. He's got a full week to work with the players and training, and he's going to sit there and he's going to have a look at doing something a bit different. It was all a bit predictable, a bit easy against Gillingham, and hopefully a slight change in formation and a slight change in personnel, because I do think 4-3-3 is built around McCurdy. He's not here now. Played to up front, get Wakelin up front with uh, Jeff Cott, and... Um, 
yeah and, and go from there and and just give it an actual go from the first minute with tempo and play like it's a cup game not a league cup game or a jpt though because we're rubbish in that. <laughs> <laughs> uh warren let's come to you next um I, I agree with nick i think these are massive if we go into the newport game it's a must win it's a must win for Lindsay. It, you know, not that I, not that I think he'll be sacked, but I just think it, the confidence it needs to give. We need a win, um, just to get this off. And I don't know. It's just so difficult at the moment. It's all how we're going to line up. I agree with Ben's point. I think four three three was very much based around McCurdy, um, just being to have that free role. And I would maybe like to see a another man maybe in the middle of that part because I think we're not blessed with wingers at the moment. I don't think wingers are working for us. Um, maybe get Darcy in the team, but they're, they're not still able to keep Gladwin and Khan and Reed in the team and go with the two up top, a nice diamond um, and play maybe Williams at the top end of that diamond. And then you've got Gladwin, Darcy it's, and Jeff Cotton Wakelin at the top end of the pitch. They've got to play them together with, People yeah. have been comparing them with Yates and Doyle and, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. And it does seem they could be because you've got one with massive work rate and one that's going to be a fox in the box, which you're hoping. Um, but we need to go for it. We need to put two men at the top end of the pitch. We need to press like we did a starting off against Rochdale. And we need to go at them from the start and be in their faces. And Lindsay needs to show this style of play that he was trying to implement or showing what he was going to implement at the start of the season, but we've got to win. It's a must win. I don't care how it happens, but it, you know what I mean? We've got to go for it. Got the dark horse and the Banbury lad as well. I think everyone's forgotten about how good he is. I think he could be a proper dark horse. Um, I quite like the look of him. Yeah, very true. Um, I believe if, I, if my mind isn't playing tricks, I've got Craig and Rich left to us. Let's ask Craig next, if I may. Yeah, I mean, I agree with a lot of what people said. I think you know Ben made a really good shout with the four-four-two uh, diamond formation. I think that that could be a game changer for Lindsay if he is brave enough to go for that. Um, it's it's not just this this game that like, you look at our next six games, like Liam pointed out. The types of teams that we are playing, they are battlers. They are they are shit houses. They, they don't like to play, you know, as much like the, the, the type of football that we do. So I am digressing slightly, but we've got Newport, Sutton, um, Doncaster as well. They, they've been getting points and wins and the other teams are like, how the hell have you done that? But they've been absolutely shithousing um, points off, off of the teams they're playing. Then it's And Grimsby. as we alluded to as well on that point, Sutton next up with a goalkeeper who is going to want to play an absolute yeah. blinder against yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. And then we got then we got Northampton and then away to Stevenage, Steve Evans team. So these are incredibly difficult games for Lindsay. So even if he gets the, the win on Saturday, the, the pressure is gonna be on. It is really gonna be be on if, if it isn't already. But um as for as for Newport, um I, I hate being the pessimistic one. I really do. I know Nick said said that I was the realist, but <laughs> I, just, I just have an awful feeling we, we are going to lose. I, I, it's, you, you know what's going to happen. If we're not 1-0 up by half time, there's going to be booze ringing around the county ground and it's going to get toxic very quickly. And Newport are out of form at the moment, so maybe we're hitting them at the right time as well. But they're probably looking at us as well and thinking that, that they probably fancy it too. So... I don't want to say another bloody draw, but I think that Newport will come away with a 2-1 win. Ouch. Um, and last but not least, and then I will go round everyone except Craig and ask for the score predictions. Oh, Rich. sorry, mate. I'm to go, can I? <laughs> um, obviously, uh, Newport are going to be bringing the numbers down as well. Uh, so that's got to be obviously factored in. Um, obviously, they haven't had a they haven't had the best, but they haven't had the worst start of the season as well. They've been very intermediate, I believe. <clears throat> um, so I think, like somebody said earlier, they're definitely going to be up for this game. Um, we have to adapt. He's got to come with a plan B this uh, this week, uh, Scott Lindsay. If things aren't happening, if things aren't working, 
he needs to think of something else. He needs to think of a way that we're going to get that first goal and hold on to that lead. Because at the moment, um, that's where we started to fail. So I feel um, the pressure is on him. Um, I think he'll want that pressure as well. Because if you don't have that pressure, then it's sort of always easy to, to go. So at this moment, he's always got that pressure on him. So hopefully now that will give him some kind of incentive to try harder and to get the best out of his team as best as possible. So I don't know how we're going to come out. It, it could be any, it, we could, like Nick said, it could be a scrappy 1-0 win. But I, 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 would, I, I, I would take it at this stage. As long as we can get those three points on the board, I, I'm, I'd, I'd be happy. OK, so we've heard Craig's prediction. He's putting us down to lose. Uh, in the order you appear on my screen, Ben, what are you think in score prediction? I'm going for a 2 0 Swindon Town win. And I think it's going to be a good win. I think I think it's going to I think they're going to come play and I kind of disrupt us and play their sort of way. And I think we're going to get a goal up and they're going to come at us a little bit and then we'll get one 10 minutes to go, second half. And we'll be relieved with probably some nervy minutes, but we'll be all right. 2 0. Okay. Nick? If he plays Jet Cop and Wade Clinch as a front two, we'll win 2 0. If he doesn't, we'll lose 1 0. Just that easy. Uh, was Just it? That easy. Um, no, I think Newport will score as much as I've raved about McDonald. Oh, God, I'm going to get slated for this tonight. Um, yeah. <laughs> People are clipping um, it up as we speak, mate. Yeah. Um, yeah um, you, you were doing so well last week, was it, weren't you? And then, and then yeah, well, that's you it. Took you took the mantle this week, Craig. We've got a yeah. Yeah. Chance, we? <laughs> I took the Wazza, Wazza of the Week trophy. Yeah, but yeah, you're you're going to have to get, 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 get the old man of the match high, out, yeah, um, that bar high. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I just look at I'm looking at some of Newport's results. I think they score goals. They play a good style of football. Where I've mentioned before, I like the manager that for Newport. I think he's a decent, uh, decent. I think they're a year away from being back up towards the top end of this league. Um, I think they'll score. I, I, I fancy. I think like I think if we go bold and go with that two up top, we could be difficult. And I think I fancy us to win three one. But, just because I really want us to win. I can't go like Craig's done and predict a loss. It's just not the way we can do it, can we? Sorry, but... can, can I just change mine slightly? Because no. I did say, if if Darcy's starting, I, um, I, I'd have I'd have a bit more faith. So if Darcy starts on Saturday... We'll get a draw, will we, Craig? No, we'll win <laughs> two-one. Yeah. One player goes from a loss to a win, Craig. Oh, it's I, amazing, I isn't it? It's like... Craig. If Darcy plays, it goes from a loss to a win. If we play with uh, Jeff Cotton Waitling, we win. If they don't play together, we lose. It's it's amazing how this works. Just there's yeah. that quick flip. Just Rich? a simple game, five feet. It's a simple game. <laughs> well, I've just seen in the comments there that Woody reckons they were going to win four 0 So I think I'll have to go with that because. Are you drinking tonight or what? <laughs> tonight or what? Woody. I tell you what though. It... Woody usually gets the, the games with the big results right, but no, I personally think I think we're going to draw one all. Okay. Um, I actually kind of agree with Warren. I think this could be a, a significant both teams to score game. Um, and ever the optimist, despite the fact that, you know, we were getting nowhere near scoring last weekend, I'm going to say we win 3 2 at the weekend. <laughs> Uh, in, in what could be a class, class game. Um, there's just one more topic, and, and if you if you gents will afford me sort of five minutes of, of pandering, for want of a better phrase, um, this is where we kind of offer it out to, to, to everyone watching um, and listening, if, if you listen back to the audio version. We, we honestly, we really do appreciate everyone's feedback positive and negative um we've never set out to be this this massive um you know this massive podcast that will have hundreds of thousands of views loads of sponsors and stuff we as we've said plenty of times we're, we're just a group of guys that came together to talk swindon town it was our joint interest 
and um, and we became mates out of it. And that's I think that's from the feedback I've had. Um, that's what really rings true is the fact that we don't have to have the same opinions, but people can see that that we've got friendships out of it, and we can just have the debate, we can have the discussion. And we've been kind of thinking about how we continue to develop, um, how we continue to develop Fools Rush In. Um, I've had some people message me ideas of things they'd like to see, and I love that. Anyone watching or listening, if you've got an idea of something you want to see or hear, please let us know because Swindon Town are very lucky, as we've said before, with you know official supporters club. Um, low strangers, so Tom Broadbent Lounge. The fact that we get mentioned in that makes us happy, um, and we want to keep things fresh. We want to keep things a little bit niche, you know. Um, so if there's something that you don't feel any of the the um, pods and stuff on offer are giving you, let us know. Let us try and achieve it because we'd be more than happy to. Um, so please continue giving us the feedback, continue um, getting involved on all the socials. Um, Craig's monitoring the Instagram and bizarrely we've got TikTok. I think he just records me when I'm not watching and post videos. <laughs> um, obviously, I, I'll keep an eye, I'm keeping an eye on, uh, no, they, I mean, there are suggestions and we will take all suggestions. But guys, what do you think to this one? Uh, <laughs> I think you would very quickly lose viewers. Um, honest, but on a, it, on a it's scene, fine for me, but <laughs> if you see the camera now, I'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> on a on a serious note, though, um, a, another example is we were overwhelmed by the amount of people that started using the Twitter nominations um, for the for the blogging award for the football blog awards or content awards. I think it is the SCAs. Um, and we can't thank people enough for considering us for, for that. And and it's very kind. And one of the things we are we started talking about today and we've been considering for a little while, um, and we want your feedback, is we have quite a few regular panellists now. I mean, there's six of us tonight. There's, what, another six that aren't here tonight all in? Um, and the last couple of episodes, because there's been a lot to talk about, have, have gone on a while. Um, which quite a few of you seem to have enjoyed. You know, we've been very conscious of time, but a lot of people have commented that they like the fact that we will just chat and chat and chat. We are considering splitting it out and having the, the Monday to review the weekend and similar to last week, having a Friday show to preview the game coming up. And we want to know, would you like that? We're not saying we're splitting the team up. It could be any combination of the panellists on any one show. Um, it won't be a, a Monday team and a Friday team. You'll be seeing people popping up everywhere. Um, but we want to know your thoughts because we we love creating the content. Um, there's there's no gain in it for us. We love chatting Swindon and we love chatting to you guys. Um, and we want to know, would that be too much? Is there too much of a good thing? Would two shows of us be too much? Would split in the the team up a little bit, be too much. Let us know your thoughts because we want to do what's best by you guys. We will sit here and we will chat any day of the week about Swindon. Um, but we want to know what what the, the, the men and women and the boys and girls that, that listen and watch our shows want. We want to do the best by you guys. So, so please drop us some comments. Let us know what you think. That is something we're considering. Um, Craig? Yeah, yeah. So if I just add, add to that. The... Um... Obviously, last Monday our, our episode was two two hours, and and like you said, we we, we had quite a long <laughs> episode on Friday. So that bearing that in mind, that's why I did the short version, the budget, uh, the budget side, the the bite size version of Monday's episode that was cut down to half an hour. Um, can we have some feedback whether people like that? Because I enjoy doing it, but it does take a lot of my time to do it. If it's worth doing, cutting when we do have a week when there's so much going on and we've got a lot to talk about, I don't mind doing, you know, cutting down to a half hour bite sized video so that people have got a bit more time to, to have a life when they're not watching us. But, um, but yeah, can people let me know what they thought about that episode? It's, it's on, it's on the YouTube and all. 
And yeah, it's only about half an hour long. And I say only half an hour, but compared to two and a half hours, it's uh, it's a, it's a breeze. But yeah, if they could let us know that that would be great as well. No, absolutely. And and please, any ideas you've got. Um, we're, we're more than happy to hear. There's no such thing as a bad idea. Our talents only stretch so far. Um, we will do everything we can. Um, seeing a load of nice comments already coming in about the Friday night shows and that. Um, I, I really like this one. Um, I would listen every night. Love the show. Keep it up, lads. That's very, very uh, generous. That um, I've seen Liam's also asked about doing Twitter spaces directly after games. That's already done by one of the other Swindon Town pods. We don't want to be seen as copying or imitating. We like to... I appreciate there's no original content in this day and age, but we like to try and... We, we've got a bit of a reputation, and we'd like to uphold that reputation for what it's worth. Um, so we, we'd like to keep things as, as fresh as possible. Um but if, if people think that there's a gap in the market for it, of course, we would consider it. Um, but please do let us know what you think. Um, but, gents, as always, it has been absolutely class having you on. Um, Nick, this will be the, the last time we see you before your holiday. Have a great time, pal. Yeah, thank you very much, Fifi. Looking forward to it. Except at the moment, it's absolutely pissing down in thunder at the moment. So <laughs> trust me to book it when all the sunshine's gone as well. But hey-o. Uh, Waza, it is always an absolute pleasure having you on, pal. It's a pleasure, gents, and it's brilliant. And I wouldn't want it to change for us. I think we're top. We're just a group of lads that we all love talking about our club. And I wouldn't want it to change the way we do it. I think we're brilliant. And so, so long may it continue because it's class for us. Um, ben, we. we... We don't always agree on everything, but never, ever change. Please keep positive because you keep me smiling. As hey, long as John Sheridan stays away from the club, I will always be positive. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't fully understand what goes into even making a, a small production like ours. But Craig, I can't thank you enough for all the efforts you've been putting in, particularly last few months. Thank you, pal. Yeah, no, you're welcome, mate. I, I do enjoy doing it, as I've as I've mentioned before. And um, again, just echoing what Fifey said, we really appreciate the positive feedback we've been getting. It's been overwhelming the last couple of months, and we seem to have built up quite a cult following, which is you know, which is absolutely amazing. And and and, and, I, and I echo what Warren says. I, I don't want us to change. I, I like what we're doing. And um, we've we found something re really good here, and, and plus they're a really fantastic uh, bunch of friends um, th throughout the pod, including the guys who aren't here today. So, but again, thank you to to all our listeners and people who watch us. We really, really do appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and uh, again, last but certainly not least, uh, Rich. Always great when you're able to uh, take time out of your incredibly busy schedule <laughs> to, to appear. But your contributions are nothing short of phenomenal when they are here. Thank you, pal. No, I love it, boys. Thanks very much for having me on, as always. Uh, from all of us here, from all of the guys who couldn't make it on tonight, uh, let's hope for three points on Saturday. Um, come on, you Reds. Thank you for joining us on Fool's Rush in and just to echo the the comment we said at the start if you are struggling it is okay there is always someone who will listen thank you very much for joining in tonight everyone see you next time